Hello to a new book and a new reading. And I guess this is a very different book to the ones that I read before. It's a book that I found on Project Gutenberg. The link, of course, is in the description. And it's a novelette, so a short novel by Mark Twain. A detective story, a crime story titled A Double-Barreled Detective Story. This book consists of two parts. I'll read, of course, both of them. Each part consists of five chapters. At least that is what the table of contents tells me, right? And, uh, well, the first part has a little one-sentence preface, which goes as follows. We ought never to do wrong when people are looking. And I'll start with chapter one. The first scene is in the country, in Virginia, the time 1880. There has been a wedding between a handsome young man of slender means and a rich young girl, a case of love at first sight, and a precipitate marriage, a marriage bitterly opposed by the girl's widowed father. Jacob Fuller, the bridegroom is 26 years old, is of an old but unconsidered family which had, by compulsion, emigrated from Sedgemoor and for King James's purse's profit, so everybody, some maliciously, the rest merely because they believed it. The bride is 19 and beautiful. She is Intense, high-strung, romantic, immeasurably proud of her cavalier blood and passionate in her love for her young husband. For its sake, she braved her father's displeasure, endured his reproaches, listened with loyalty unshaken to his warning predictions, and went from his house without his blessing, proud and happy in the proofs she was thus giving of the quality of the affection which had made its home in her heart. The morning after the marriage, there was a sad surprise for her. Her husband put aside her proffered caresses and said, Sit down. I have something to say to you. I loved you. That was before I asked your father to give you to me. His refusal is not my grievance. I could have endured that. But the things he said of me to you, that is a different matter. There, you needn't speak. I know quite well what they were. I got them from authentic sources. Among other things, he said that my character was written in my face, that I was treacherous, a dissembler, a coward, and a brute without sense of pity or compassion. The Sedgemoor trademark, he called it, and white sleeve badge. Any other man in my place would have gone to his house and shot him down like a dog. I wanted to do it, and was minded to do it. But a better thought came to me to put him to shame, to break his heart, to kill him by inches. How to do it? Through my treatment of you, his idol. I would marry you and then have patience. You will see. From that moment onward, for three months, the young wife suffered all the humiliations, all the insults, all the miseries that the diligent and inventive mind of the husband could contrive, save physical injuries only. Her strong pride stood by her, and she kept the secret of her troubles. Now and then the husband said, Why don't you go to your father and tell him? Then he invented new tortures, applied them, and asked again. She always answered, He shall never know by my mouth, and taunted him with his origin, said she was the lawful slave of a scion of slaves, and must obey, and would, up to that point, but no further. He could kill her if he liked, but he could not break her. 
It was not in the Sedgemoor breed to do it. At the end of the three months, he said, with a dark significance in his manner, I have tried all things but one, and waited for her reply. Try that, she said, and curled her lip in mockery. That night he rose at midnight and put on his clothes, then said to her, Get up and dress. She obeyed, as always, without a word. He led her half a mile from the house and proceeded to lash her to a tree by the side of the public road, and succeeded, she screaming and struggling. He gagged her then, struck her across the face with his cowhide and set his bloodhounds on her. They tore the clothes off her and she was naked. He called the dogs off and said, You will be found by the passing public. They will be dropping along about three hours from now and will spread the news. Do you hear? Goodbye. You have seen the last of me. He went away then. She moaned to herself, I shall bear a child to him. God grant it may be a boy. The farmers released her by and by and spread the news, which was natural. They raised the country with lynching intentions, but the bird had flown. The young wife shut herself up in her father's house. He shut himself up with her and thenceforth would see no one. His pride was broken and his heart. So he wasted away day by day, and even his daughter rejoiced when death relieved him. Then she sold the estate and disappeared. This was chapter one. Bye-bye. Till next time with chapter two.